Hello and welcome my clipped fingernail savers, it's SJB here, and you guys loved my last video where we talked about all the primary monkey knowledge, so today we're gonna go over all of the military monkey knowledge. And to start you guys off, we're gonna go for our first monkey knowledge upgrade already. Notice the prices of all these guys over here, and you're gonna notice when we build our first one, all of them are gonna go up. And that's because the first military monkey that you place is going to be two-thirds of the price that it normally was. And Ninja Kiwi actually nerfed that from back in the day when it used to be half-price military monkey. And you could do a heli pilot start, which was just absurdly overpowered and kind of ridiculous. And they had to get rid of it. So now we've got this guy. Now there's actually a lot of really cool uh, military monkey knowledge. And there's a lot that actually affect multiple towers at the same time, which is really cool. Um, unlike a lot of the primary knowledge where it's just like darts do this, subs do, or uh, darts do this, glue does this, tax do this. Um, these guys can spread out throughout uh, a majority of different things, which I think is really, really cool. So I think the first thing to talk about is the things that are going to affect a majority of the monkeys or kind of affect the entirety of the system. So, the first military monkey is going to cost two-thirds of the normal amount. Um, this is interesting, too, that if you place down a, a sniper, a sub, or a buccaneer. Alright, I'm going to do a buccaneer here. Uh, and you put them on last. They actually gain an automatic 10% speed boost. So, if you could position this guy in a way that makes making him uh, go on last actually makes sense, do it. Like, every single time. That's something that I sort of, like, overlook in my normal games, because... Uh, it's easy to forget about that, and if you're ever playing chimps, you don't want to keep setting this guy on last one. First might actually be better, and you don't want to make that mistake. So remember that, again, it is based on whether or not you have the monkey knowledge activated. In chimps mode in particular, everything is off. No monkey knowledge. It's the M of the chimps. So just keep that in mind when you're playing these games, and make sure you're remembering whether it's a non-chimps game or a regular chimps game, because all of this stuff will affect how you play your stuff. Um, all militaries, this is a really cool one, all military uh, monkeys here have a reduced cost uh, of their base price by 5%. All of them. That's really cool, too. Um, it's really making, like, uh, you know, starting off with military monkeys actually pretty effective here, which I just, I find kind of, kind of cool, I guess. Um, in addition... Uh, there is one of these things where if you're ever, you know, worried about experience, you know, if you have not unlocked everything here, uh, this is probably the first thing you should probably buy, because it gives you an automatic 1,000 experience for every single one of your military monkeys, and in addition, it, you earn 5% faster experience forever. So, I don't know if that's going to help you out at all. If you're just starting off, that's something you probably want to get here. Um, and the last thing, which is kind of weird, and I, we, we don't, we're not going to fight it yet, but on round 40, all Moabs... All Moab class balloons will spawn in a slightly damaged state. I don't remember if you can actually see if it's in the damaged state or not, but normally a Moab is going to have 200 health, and it's probably down to like 190 or something like that, but I've honestly never tested it before and see uh, how much damage it actually has, but I'm going to guess it's like 5% or something. So that's all the stuff that's going to affect all of the monkeys here. Um, next up, let's talk about the Buccaneer. So the Monkey Buccaneer and the Sub get plus one pierce automatically, just from existing here with your Monkey Knowledge, which is pretty cool. In addition, Grape Shot here, instead of shooting out five grapes, is going to shoot out six grapes. So it's not a game changer or anything like that, but every little bit of popping power can definitely matter here when you're going with extra grapes. You're putting them on last, getting extra speed. It's going to make your Buccaneers actually quite powerful here. Um, since we have the availability, and I actually want to get some money here, merchant ships are going to gain tw plus 20 per round. So normally it's only $200. And I always noticed this when I was playing my games. And I was like, dang, why did they make it such a weird number? $220, bro? That doesn't make much sense. But it makes sense because we've got monkey knowledge. Now instead of $200 at the end of, this, uh, the end of uh, each round here, it's going to be $220 at the end of each round, which is pretty cool. Normally I'm a pretty big jumper rounderer. Uh, but I'm going to try to keep it a little bit more organized and kind of go um, at least as close as I can to uh, monkey by monkey here. And the next one up is going to be the Monkey Pirates. This is not a game changer by any means, but it is a changer of the way that you may play your game slightly. Uh, the Moab takedown here has a reduced cooldown of 5 seconds. Oh crap, didn't mean to hit that. So uh, if you're willing to uh, spam some boats and have a really, really, really powerful tower that also has some cool ability action, so you can, this guy not on chimps will give you that quick, awesome monkey knowledge advantage. All right, guys, it's about that time. Let's talk about the submarines. So submarines are already a really, really powerful tower. In fact, you guys usually rank it as the best tower in all of BTD6 whenever I ask. So do subs live up to their name with monkey knowledge? Kind of. I mean, they're already pretty powerful, and one of the upgrades that's going to change the most is actually going to be your airburst darts. 
So Airburst Darts, instead of splitting into three darts when it explodes, will now split into four darts when it explodes, which is a... Uh, oh, man. I mean, that's that's a big 20%, 25% extra popping power there, or 33% extra popping power. Um, and it's... I don't know. It's a... a it's a big deal. It really is a big deal, especially when you go for an early Airburst Dart sub. It can help you out a lot. In addition, they also give you the Ballistics Missile Upgrade, which does more damage to Ceramic Glass Blooms. Okay, I'm not sure how much this is going to matter here. Um, I don't usually use the Ballistics Missile all that often, but it is super powerful on rounds like 63 and stuff like that. So if you really need some extra popping power, this guy is the way to go, man. Ballistics Missile, and you can even pop in Ballistics Missile with... Your, trip, your air burst starts if you're desiring something weird like that. And then last but not least, I'm actually not going to show it to you guys on screen here, but the sub commander. So on chimps mode in particular, again, don't forget this, uh, the way sub commander is going to work is it adds extra pierce and damage uh, to all subs in its radius. And that is the clear cut problem with a lot of action on chimps. Try to spread out your subs at all, you're going to be screwed over hardcore. So, subs in the corner here, subs all over the place with monkey knowledge will allow you with your sub commander to get all those extra buffs in addition. Um, it doesn't matter, it doesn't increase its range, it's global. So, it's really, really, really cool to give all those special bonuses here to all those guys around there. But don't forget again, on Chimps Mode, that will possibly make you lose your game trying to go for subs and screwing them over, but not putting everything inside this guy's radius here. Don't forget, longer range can't also give you that bigger radius if you're really looking for it, but eh, it's not a necessity. All right, next up, let's talk about the Monkey Ace. So this one is a Monkey Ace Heli Pilot combo here. Um, all aces and Heli Pilots get plus one pierce per shot. Uh, pretty big deal there, to be honest, especially for Monkey Aces, in my opinion, because uh, they shoot out a lot of darts, dude. So if you're getting an extra pierce here, don't forget that. That's a big deal, man. I mean, they, they don't get that much popping power already, so plus one is a big deal. Um, only if you're maxing out your popping power, which is not always the case, though. Darts. From the aces actually fly faster with this monkey knowledge activated so you can see they're moving pretty quick um i don't know if that's helpful or not but you're not gonna miss as much maybe if they're moving kind of quick here uh pineapples will only drop on the track so if you're buying the exploding pineapple here you're gonna notice that the pineapples are only gonna drop on the track here when if you do not have the monkey knowledge they'll just drop randomly all over the place they'll drop in the middle of areas that don't make any sense and stupid areas they'll just be kind of mad about uh in addition Aces attack 10% faster. So that's a pretty big buff right there. 10% doesn't seem like much, but when you got some rapid fire, load more darts, fighter plane action, or Operation Dart Storm, ridiculousness, this can actually make a pretty significant difference here with 10% faster. All the way up to Sky Shredder, bro, and a big plane? Heck yeah, man. 10% big, 10% extra popping power is the difference between losing and not losing in some of these games. In addition, don't forget about Wing Monkey is a monkey knowledge point. If you guys have not used Wing Monkey before, I've got to recommend it. It's really freaking good. I also need to buy, buy something else here because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to take down these ceramics here. Also, I'm going to put this guy on first. <laughs> I'm going to last for a long time <laughs> getting my extra popping power over here. It looks like Wing Monkey is actually coming through for us and doing a great job. So I'm actually going to sell to get this guy going, but a Sky Shredder is also going to be cheaper. All fifth tier aces cost 10% less. Up, 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 up. Oh my god. I knew I had myself a problem. Well, that fifth tier is 10% cheaper now, and also go to own all the balloons right now. So you can see fast shooting, fast firing. It's like Sky Shredder is just unstoppable, basically. Run 63 equals equals nothing yes, to us. Um, but that's not all. There are more monkey knowledge points we have to go over, my friends. We still have to deal with the Dartling Gun, uh, the Heli Pilot, and the Mortar. And we're going to do the Mortar last, because he's actually really interesting with late game action as well. Before we get too deep in here, I want to say, first of all, that I am sorry that I, I nag you guys sometimes, uh, but also thank you guys so freaking much. Like from the bottom of my toes to the top of my fingertips, whatever kind of thank you you guys want, I would love to give it to you, okay? You guys are super duper awesome. Um, I've been asking you guys to use my uh, creator support code. And you guys really followed through for me, and I, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of you guys who have typed in SJB into the Nexus creator support code thing. Um, thank you guys so much. If you haven't done it yet, that's that's okay. Um, it, it's not an absolute necessity, but it's one of the best ways to support me and play your favorite game in the process. If you guys haven't done it, it's on the home screen. Click the settings icon. A little purple button's going to pop out. It says creator, creator code or whatever. Type in lowercase letters SJB, and boom! You're already, you're already supporting me, man. 
Um, a lot of people always ask me, like, how do I support you, Chris? And this is probably one of the easiest and most fun ways to, to do it. Just play a game and have fun doing it, and uh, uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Um, the only way that I can say thank you got back to you guys is just by trying to make some decently quality videos and uh, reading your guys' comments and trying to follow through on anything that I can do to become a better YouTuber. So if there is anything that I can do for you guys, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear it. Um, otherwise, I'll just keep doing what I do, and, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. All right, next up, guys, we're going to talk about the heli pilots and the mortars. So first of all, we're going to go over to the Razor Rotors upgrade, which is going to be more powerful. I don't know the exact value here. Um, sadly, with the monkey knowledge stuff, they don't net generally give you exact values. And without testing and sandbox mode for like a long period of time and all that stuff, uh, just know that Razor Rotors is more powerful with the monkey knowledge than without the monkey knowledge. And I assume that he just Razor Rotors faster, basically. Just increases the attack speed of that thing, not actually makes it more powerful or whatnot. Um, in addition, though, we've got a really cool change with the support Chinook and the special operations. So, monkey knowledge gives you 25% extra cash and lives for this uh, ability right here, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, in addition, you guys might not know this, but uh, you can move towers around with this guy, uh, whether it's just a stupid tax shooter or something like that, or an alchemist that you want to like alchemize multiple people or whatnot, but you can actually pick people up with the door gutter and keep them picked up. So, for example, if we wanted like a boomerang that, you know, I don't know, always... Uh, shoots Moabs backwards. We could pick this guy up with our door gunner, and then this guy is already on pursuit. Or so I thought. He's on pursuit, so now we have a door gunning boomerang on here. I don't think you can click on him anymore. You can't overclock him or whatnot, but it's just a cool addition to the game to know that you can do that. Next, let's talk about the mort, because that was the only three things for the heli pilot, I believe. Besides the fact that uh, you get extra plus one pierce for the other monkey knowledge that affects monkey aces as well. So this is actually a really cool change, and I like the idea of it. Artillery battery, bro. Minus $600. Now, on Impopable, it's not going to affect it as much as it would on something like Easy, because the cheaper it is, that $600 is going to affect it more and more and more. Larger percentage for a lower cost. So artillery battery on lower uh, uh, difficulties with monkey knowledge. Oh, freaking beautiful, dude. Highly recommend it. One of the best towers in the game, and now it just gets extra, extra, extra delicious. We're going to go Bloom Buster as well. And then for round 95, we're going to need this guy. Shattering Shells. I don't exactly know exactly how this works entirely, but Shattering Shells without of... Um, so Shattering Shells normally just kind of de-reinforces things. That's kind of its main thing. Um, specifically ceramics, uh, like round 98, it can de-reinforce BFBs, um, uh, but it cannot de-reinforce DDTs, which is interesting, because it says like DDTs are more powerful than BFBs, basically. But... With the Shattering Shells, you also de-reinforce, uh, or you de camoize the DDTs. Allowing all of your other towers that normally don't hit camo balloons to now hit these DDTs, which is a super, super big help here. But don't forget that it's only on non-chimps mode, and for playing chimps mode, it means that this guy might not be as good as he probably should be for DDT bobbing power. So just, just keep that in mind. And here we go, we get to see an action, actually. If you look... Uh, the, the camoized DDTs are blue, and the decamoized DDTs are yellow here. So it does actually come into play a little bit here. We're going to put this guy in a wing monkey, I think, just because it's kind of fun. And then I'm going to use my artillery battery thing, and we're going to pop this guy down. Hopefully we can actually take down round 95, because I realize we're actually kind of a little bit weak right now. Uh, most because I've spent a lot of, uh, not as much money as I probably should have. And I've got some weird weird towers on the screen that don't normally stay on the screen here. Fourth and fifth tiers that like, just don't make much sense, like Razor Rotors and a weird cannon ship at this point in the game. And a merchant ship. Like Those are not normal towers that we'd normally build in these game modes. But it's it's alright. We'll, we'll get through. And these guys, like what are they doing? They don't really do much right now. I guess we can get a sub-commander. That'll probably change the game in our favor quite a bit. Especially if we get an advanced intel with arm-piercing darts. Holy crap. We just got good here, guys. So the last upgrades that we've got to talk about here are the dartling gun changes. Um, nothing is insane. I should mention that. Uh, these are... Uh, I don't want to say bad, but really nothing ridiculous here. So first of all, if you lock your dartling gun in place, you're going to see this big red button here. And when you use this button... Uh, let's say you say, oh crap, there's balloons taking through. I'm aiming the wrong way. Hopefully you have it hotkeyed, to, you know, lower on over here on like the first or second thing or something like that. But if not, you can get that button press and you're going to automatically turn them back onto normal targeting instead of this uh, uh, 
uh, locked in targeting. But not only does it affect one dartling gun, it can affect all your dartling guns. So if you're really, really struggling lug in here to kind of get everybody organized and whatnot, that is one of the best ways to just boop, pop that guy down and save the day. But that's not it, guys. There is more. So, uh, Hydra Rockets, if you guys have not seen it, or excuse me, Rocket Storm, if you guys have not seen it, can actually stun Blutes. Again, only with the ability activated, but uh, it can stun um, stun Blutes. And they had to nerf this guy, by the way, because it used to be able to stun Moab-class Blutes as well, and they realized how absolutely absurd it was to stun ridiculously large Blutes in large quantities. And now I think it either stuns a lot, I think it just stuns a little bit less now. It doesn't stun none. But it makes sense now how much it stuns compared to what he used to. You could, like, infinite stun with Hydra Rocket Pods and just make this guy absolutely own. And maybe he's still as powerful as I, I as I remember him, and I just pff, haven't used him in a long time. I don't know. But he is a still very powerful tower, and that monkey knowledge is going to be a big difference, actually. I kind of lied a little bit earlier when I said they weren't that good. All right, but last but not least, this one is kind of bad. Plasma Accelerator with a Plasma Accelerator. Combine them together. Uh, you're going to see if you... On the screen here, you could like make a little plasma pool, but you could actually get this guy to make different plasma pools if you decide to like lock them in place. This big yellow goopy thing right here is actually those plasmas crossing their streams and making a plasma pool that's gonna pop extra blues. It's a little lackluster, but it still is part of the game. It's still there and you could use it if you want to. Uh, so that's all of them guys. That is all of the military monkey knowledge in the game. Uh, I don't know which ones I would say are most the most powerful. Um, I would definitely say get the two-thirds cost Military Monkey, because that's a really good early game popper there. And then anything involving Monkey Aces and their speed attacks uh, is really cool as well. Like 10% speed and 10% less cost on the, the fifth tiers. Those are big, big, big changes. You can save like five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 on this guy. It's like big, big chunks of money on this guy as well. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot, of, a lot of changes here uh, with Monkey Knowledge. They're hard to uh, incorporate everything into the game, but hopefully this helped you out a little bit in understanding what um, what you need to pay attention to with Chimps Mode and or just using Military Monkeys. If you guys enjoyed, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. But of course, have a super duper delicious day.